Here's the situation. You have a filterable spreadsheet with scores. What you need is a way to rank the visible or the filtered data. Let's take a look at this example here. I have my regions, my stores, their scores, and the company rank. To get the rank here, I used Excel's rank formula, which is just going to rank this score against the entire set. I happen to know there's 29 stores, so what this is telling me is that Los Angeles is 15 of 29. But now as a manager, I'm going to look at these regions individually. I'm going to start with New York, and I'm going to come down here, and I can see that the rank formula is still ranking against the entire set. What I really want to see once I filter is how these rank against the group that they're in. So I would need to look at all of these numbers right here, try to find the lowest one, which is a 5. That means that Syracuse is number 1 within this region. Then I'd have to do the scan and look for the next highest one and see that it's 6. So I know that 6 is really number 2 within this region. Well, doing a visual scan like that, there's room for error, and it's slow. And as a smart manager, I know time is money, and I don't want to waste any time, and I don't want to waste any money. So I want a formula that's going to automatically adjust when I filter and give me the results I'm looking for. However, Excel doesn't have a ranking formula that does that, but they do have a group of subtotal formulas that do only work on visible data. So I'm going to use that as part of my solution. Here's my subtotal formula. The first argument is what type of subtotal. A 3 stands for count A or count on um, blanks. This whole offset part is going to force it to look at each one individually. This entire array right here, the first array, is going to put in memory a 0 if it's not visible and a 1 if it is visible. Now I'm using the sum product, which is going to take this set of 1s and zeros going to multiply it by the next set of ones and zeros and add it together. The next part, the second array here, is my condition. What this is doing is it's looking at each score against the entire set and storing in memory a zero or a one if this condition is true or false. Now this normally wants to store in memory trues and falses. I can't use a true or a false in multiplication, so I need a 1 instead of a true and a 0 instead of a false. And the double negative will force it to switch trues and falses to 1s and zeros. So an easy way to see what this is looking at is just think of your highest score. Here at San Francisco it's 100. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you're ranking because there won't be anything higher than the highest. So, this is going to st store all zeros in that case. Now we have um, ones and zeros over here. We're only concerned about the ones because a zero times anything is a zero. So the equivalent ones for the equivalent zeros are going to be zero when you multiply them together and add them up. That result is going to be zero. Then we add a one. So the final result is one. And that's how the highest score is going to get the number one ranking. Now if you think of the number two ranking or the second highest, all of these scores over here are going to be zero except for one. One is going to be uh, one and it's going to be lined up with the one from this array, meaning it's visible. So one times one is one. All those other zeros are going to be zero plus 1 makes the final result 2. And that's how this is working. For the third highest, you're going to have 2 above it. 2 plus 1 is 3. And that's how this works. So I can grab it and drag it all the way down and see that the results are identical to the company rank. And that's because this isn't filtered yet. So now I know I could use this as a filtered or an unfiltered ranking formula. But now I want to go back to New York and look at it and see if it gave me the results I was after. Earlier I said I looked over here and 5 was the lowest one, so it should have been 1. And, and it is. And then 6 was 2. So this is working exactly what I, how I wanted it to work. It's telling me that Syracuse is 1 in this group or in the New York region. Let me show you how I did that. Here I just used uh, Excel's rank formula to find the company rank. And this is the formula I used for the filtered rank. 
both of these formulas are exactly the same except for how I switched the trues and falses to ones and zeros. I could use either one. They both do the same thing. I used a comma and then a double negative here, actually in all my formulas, but I could have just skipped the comma and used an asterisk. It would have came out with the same result. And that is a way to solve this need.